Okay, trying again. We will get this right. Um, Barb had mentioned that the letters were not big enough. Now, to me, this looks reversed when I look on this, but I'm hoping it isn't. If it is, I will delete this video and try it again. Um, but I tried to make the letters bigger and with a bolder marker so that they're easier to see. Um, and we'll just, this may be done in a couple of pieces this time because I need to head out of here in just a bit, but I'll try to get some done. Um, and I want to respond to comments that people have made to me so that they know that I am considering these things. Lila expressed that there were quite a few words to learn at one time and that it should be a lot less. Um, or she, I don't know if she said it should be, but she just felt like it was a lot to learn. Um, and I thought about that. I thought, well, I could cut it in half or down or something. But I thought, no, I, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's not like you have to keep up. You can go back and do things over and over until you do feel like you have them. Um, and if I do this lesson in two pieces, you can listen to this one and then come back and do the other half another time. Um, and I'm thinking like when we were in high school um, and we had vocabulary lists and something, I remember getting like 25 or 30 at a time. Um, and I realized this is foreign language was a whole lot different. But even when I was learning foreign languages, I don't or trying to learn foreign languages. Uh, I don't recall there only being like four or five words a week. It was a lot more than that. So we could actually learn it. So I'm going to leave it this way and then let you self pace. You can do whatever you want or nothing at all. So um, that's just where this is going to go. Okay, so. This is the word for man, ish. Olive, yod, um, sheen. I was thinking I'd forgotten a letter, but I didn't. Um, and then this is woman, isha. Now you have uh, the yod here. The hyric yod makes the long e sound, e. But even if you don't have the yod, but you have the hyric, then it's still going to make the E sound. So both of them are three letters, if that helps you remember it. Just got to remember which one is different. Ish, Isha. The hay on the end. Oops, I forgot something. I did forget a mark. And with a number of things, which I'll be showing you in this lesson, there mm -hmm. is, if you put the hay on the end, it makes it a, um, a feminine word from a masculine. You can do that with a number of different words. Not all of them work that way, but a lot of them do. Okay, and so then here is bite. Bait, yod, tov. And in the name of our congregation, it's kahilat bait lechem. This is bite. It's a different word. They both come from this. This is the original word. But bait means house of. There's a change in the vowels, and so it just means something different. So that the name of our congregation is Congregation of the House of Bread. This is just house, not house of. And then in order to be able to put some words together and actually make some sentences, some really short sentences, we need a few other little helper things. These are all prefixes. The hey at the beginning of a word is uh, means the. It's the definite article. And the letter hey has all kinds of uses. I mean, it's used for everything. Kind of like our S, it might mean possessive, it might mean plural, you know, it can mean a number of things. And if, and in context, it's pretty clear which it is. Same thing with the hey. This will be at the beginning if it means the. It'll be at the end if it's a feminine ending. Or other things <laughs> and this is just the letter ba it just has the shiva under the under the letter so it doesn't have a big vowel sound and this means in but then they have contractions just like we do the in if you put them together for in the you have the bet but you also have the longer ah sound ba bite would be in the house ha bite would be the house, babite would be in house, and that's actually how you would say at home, babite. 
ba bite means in the house. And so to put a few of those things together, so you can see how that works. So I'll just start with ish. I always do this. <laughs> Thinking of the sheen. Okay. And to make the letters bigger so that they're, they are more visible for you guys, it's hard to get them all across. So we'll just do the best we can. This is going to be a little scrunched. Okay. And that's supposed to be a bigger space there. That's two words. Ish ba bite. The man, and we would probably add some things like you've probably seen trying to learn any language or when other people are learning English and you hear them speak, they leave out little words that we're, we expect to be there or when or we or they put them in where we wouldn't use one. So we would probably say a man. This actually means a man because they don't even have an indefinite article. There is no a or an. There is the word or there's the whatever. Um, so ha ish or excuse me ish ba bite a man in house. That's exactly what it translates as. But if you really wanted to make it sound like an English phrase, we'd say a man is at home. That, but that would be their phrase for at home. Now, if you changed it, ish ba bite. A man is in the house. And if you put ha, on the front of ish. Ha ish ba bait. The man is, and we have to supply is because that's not a word they have. Ha ish is ba bait. The man is in the, because this is the contraction, in the house. See, I'll start with this way. And this is just going to have to fit on two lines. Ha isha ba bite. Now, can you translate that in your own mind? If you don't have that, don't have the ha on there, what is this word? That's woman. And you put the ha at the beginning, and it means the woman. Now, normally with the letter hey turning into a the, let's see, me think of a word. Okay, I'll use a just a i just use a sheen since we've been using that. There's going to be a word that starts with a sheen. And I'm going to make it the whatever. Normally, you have to also add a doggish. This little dot that's part of the the. The the. But Olive is one of the few letters that cannot take a doggish. It just doesn't happen. So you won't see it there, but you will see it frequently. So the woman, now what is this? Here's bite, and that's house. What does this prefix mean? Is it in, is it the, or is it in the? This is just in. So if you, direct, if you directly translate it word for word, the woman, in house. We would probably translate it as the woman is in the house because we don't usually just say in house. 
Well, we do, but not when, it, like we're talking about the work all being done in-house, but that's a different kind of meaning than this. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you some verbs. They don't use is, but they certainly have a bunch of verbs. Uh, let's see. So, and they, like many languages, have a different form for each gender and person and tense and everything else so that even if you don't have the the name the subject you can still kind of tell what's going on but there will be a subject there okay so this is he saw it's rough okay Ra ah the olive only has a sound of whatever gets attached to it as a vowel marker. This does not mean it's feminine. The three-letter root is resh, olive, hey. So, but this is a really common verb. You'll see it a lot. Ra ah means he saw. Now, just like with the nouns, in the verb, if you want to make it feminine, past tense, you usually would add a hey. To, so it would go along, it would match. Problem is, we already have a hey on the end of ra'a. And Hebrew doesn't like two non-vocal vowels, two non-vocal consonants right next to each other. So they change it a little bit for she saw. They add a tav in the middle of it. Ra'a is he saw. Ra'a ta is she saw. And lots of times the tav will be an indication. Not always, but something you'll see. You'll, it'll be common. You'll run into it repeatedly. The tav added somewhere is going to mean that it's a feminine verb. Won't always be like this, but this is the way you can make she saw different from he saw. And this would actually be a sentence, but I'm going to probably stack all the words here so I can make them big enough that you can see And that will, sh oh yeah, got plenty of room. Ish, ra, a, bayit. Ish is man, ra, a is he saw, bayit. So this way is a man, because we would have to supply the a, a man saw, a house. We would put a in front of it as well. It, if you just do literal word for word, e, a man saw house. But in Hebrew, they usually reverse the subject and the verb from what we're used to. So you will find that it would more likely say Ra'a ish bite. A man saw a house. That's usually the order that you're going to find things. And let's see, what else am I going to do in this first part? Um, okay. I'm also going to add another uh, helper word. Is it one or two? Okay. Okay. Um, et. The olive and tav. We can find places in the Tanakh where this appears to be symbolic of Yeshua, the beginning and the end. Because in uh, Revelation, where it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, 
I really don't think that a Hebrew speaking Messiah speaking to one of his Hebrew speaking disciples would have spoken in Greek. They both understood it perhaps, but I doubt that would have been the native tongue. He probably said, I am the olive and top, the beginning and the end. And he, since he's the word, it's going to be all the letters in between too. So this is something that you'll find in Hebrew. It means that the word coming right after it is the direct object of the verb. And I will show you if you don't remember English from a thousand years ago. Um, let's see. So we're back to a man. Saw. And I'm going to start it this way. I know it's spaced over here a little bit. There's a reason for that. Ish ra'a bite. A man saw a house. Now, what if I wanted to put the house? His wife found a really cool house. She wants to show it to him. Oh, now he sees the house. Whenever you have a definite article or a proper noun, somebody's name, whenever it's a specific noun, it's not just a house. He was looking across the desert. Oh, there's a house over there. Maybe they have water. It's a house. This is the house. Before it, you have to put et. And that's hardly fitting. Okay. Ish ra'a et habait. A man saw, tells you that the next word is going to be a definite, uh, a direct object. A man saw the house. So if, uh, Changing it up just a little bit. Think, 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 think. Okay, ha isha, that's the woman, the woman, saw, it's a specific way to write the verb form for past tense, third person feminine, the woman saw house. Okay, so she's got a definite article. We're talking about the woman. What do we have to have there? Nothing, <laughs> because this is a house. Yes, she has a definite article, but the definite article is not immediately following the verb. So if you had the house, then you would have to have it. And I guess I would, because I can't fit it down there now. Ha isha ra'a et habait. The woman saw the house. Um, let's see. There's going to be... Don't want to have too much on the next one. Okay, well, I guess this will do. I need to go do a couple things, and then I will come back and do part B. And I hope that this is actually turned around the right way. I will check it to make sure. And I will see you guys later.